There is a practice, and if not a practice, at least a sentiment, that is followed universally throughout the three Abrahamic religions. This practice is both sad and disgusting. It's sad because so many people will take this line of thought and carry it from their childhood all the way through their adult life. It is disgusting because not only will they carry it throughout their adult life, but they will also teach this to their children, to the innocent ones who are still learning that everything that mommy and daddy says is true. That line of thinking is that we are dirty. We as humans are not worthy of the good things in life because of the sins of the humans that came before us. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, usually spoken by someone who does not understand the implications of that rash line of thought. If we look back on the family history of any one of us, we will surely find an individual we are descended from who has lacked morals and in some cases common decency. There is probably a bank robber or thief or murderer in all of our family trees. However, you'll find no one who finds it reasonable to punish their descendants for those crimes. If you kill someone, you stand trial. You pay for your crime. A judge doesn't jail the children or the brother or the wife of the person who committed the crime. This has been a practice because none of us would wish to punish our own children for the crimes we have committed. However, this simple logic is tossed away when we deal with religion. It all stems from a story in the opening pages of the Bible where one man and one woman committed the original sin. As the story goes, they were held accountable for that by being cast out of the Garden of Eden, along with having to till the land and fight for survival for not only the rest of their days, but for all of ours. This led to an even bigger punishment, making all of us, every person beginning with their firstborn Cain, worthy of hell, where we would be eternally tortured. If you want a more personal perspective, think about it like this. Think of everything laid out in the Bible as directed by God. And if you were to break any one of those things, then every person for the rest of the time is deserving of hell. Does that sound reasonable to you? Christians will often say that we deserve hell and that grace and forgiveness is a gift. But they seem unwilling to answer the simple question which follows. Why specifically do I deserve hell? What did I as an individual do to deserve that. The point is that we are all being taught that all of us, regardless of our individuality, deserve a punishment which is one of the worst punishments that can be imagined because of the actions of someone else, because of the actions that we had nothing to do with. Children are taught this. Children, sweet and innocent, even Cindy Lou Who, who was so sweet and innocent to turn the Grinch's heart three sizes too big, deserve to go to hell and be tortured by demons forever. This is not the rational line of thought which follows in any manner of our society unless you inject religion into it. I want you to grasp what we're saying here. This is a universal concept, not a rare fluke. Look at your babies and your kids and your wives and husbands and best friends and your sweet old grandma. I believe that any of you would fight for these people to not have to bear the punishment for anything that you do. You would also fight to defend them from being punished for a crime done by someone else. However, when it's put through religious filters, not only do you allow the thought that they deserve hell to reside in your mind, you will justify it and teach it to your children. And you will teach them to teach their children that they deserve eternal hellfire. And the truly sad and disgusting part of it is that people still have the unmitigated audacity to try to convince me that this was punishment given to all of man from a just God, a good God. There exists no other example of a more disproportional punishment. This was a punishment that spans all of time, that's so horrible, and yet with that knowledge, people still sleep well at night and they give no more thought to it than they would anything else that seems to coexist with normality. What is the punishment supposed to teach anyone? This is the greatest punishment imaginable, and you threaten humanity with it as punishment for them to not follow an idea that you yourself can't prove, that you can't validate, that you require a band-aid called faith, and even take it seriously yourself? Religion has made billions of people think that this is the way things should be. So we leave you with three questions. First, how is this not the greatest case of brainwashing that has ever been pulled off in human history? How many religious individuals have never questioned this concept? And finally, can you think of any situation in which this mentality can be defended and justified honestly? It's just about that time of year again here in North Carolina. No, no, not Christmas time. And of course, standardized testing or EOC time. 
Shortly after the holiday break, students will have the opportunity to fill out bubble sheets to have the state tell them how smart they are and the core subjects they took during the first semester, and therefore, how good or bad their teachers are as well. Not all core subjects are tested equally, however. Because 10th grade English students take a standardized writing test wherein students are tested on how well they can write a formulaic five-paragraph essay, their tests take much longer to grade than a Scantron test like what you'd find in civics and economics. And each essay must be scored by two separate graders, with their score being averaged between the two. This expensive and time-consuming process means that 10th grade English students don't take their writing EOC at the end of their semester like every other core subject does. Students from the first semester have full 18 weeks to learn the material needed to write their tests well, but they don't take the test until six weeks into their next semester while taking a full load of other classes. Meanwhile, 10th graders scheduled to take English in the second semester only get six weeks to learn what the first semester students have 18 weeks to learn and six weeks to forget. Does that sound standardized to you? Politicking with PR. <laughs> That's me! Wars are won when you win battles. On Saturday, a battle was won in the war for equal rights for the LGBT community. That battle was a closure motion to repeal the policy known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which was put in place in 1993. Ever since it's been the policy of the U.S., and by the extension the U.S. military, to demand that if a member of the military were not straight, that they shut the hell up and accept that the government can ask you to die for your country, but not while being free to openly love the person of your choosing. Charge that hill and shut the fuck up. Sixteen years, eleven months, and twenty-seven days later, the Senate did what they should have done sixteen years, eleven months, and twenty-seven days ago. They capitalized the letter I in the military's core value of integrity. This can be the home of the brave, but it cannot be the land of the free as long as we require gay military members to hide their true identities in a way that no straight person ever would. However, 22% of Americans, 175 congressional members, and 31 senators still oppose this right of equality. There are more battles to be fought, but today I think I speak for the entire LGB community when I say that we won, you lost, get used to it. I've been working on a cocktail called Grounds for It is considered disrespectful to question God, who many uh, black people believe has brought us through so many trials that we've gone through as a, as a race. And basically, uh, they, they, a lot of people say, oh, it's God that brought us through, it's God that brought us through. And what they don't realize is that it is, in fact, our own strength and will and hard work and refusal to be accepted as anything other than equals that has brought us through. And I think that when people own that, uh, it will be better off for it.